Uh, I'd like to start by thanking the organizers for giving me the opportunity to speak here. Uh, so I'm going to talk about dynamics of a colloidal particle coupled to a Gaussian field. I'll define the model in a minute. So this is based on a joint work with uh, Vansa Demery from ESPCI and Andrea Gambasi at uh, SPCI. Uh, so the colloidal, uh, I mean the random motion of a colloidal particle uh, in contact with some complex medium is typically described by an effective uh, Langevin equation where the effect of the medium on the particle is encoded in two forces, the so-called friction and noise. We have already heard about it uh, many times in this conference already. So in equilibrium, the friction and noise are related by fluctuation dissipation theorem. And for the most simple, uh, the simplest case, where the, the medium is just a simple fluid, then the friction is constant. So it's just proportional to velocity, the frictional force. And the noise is uh, this Gaussian white noise. And we have for an overdone particle, what is the well-known Brownian motion. So the uh, velocity is proportional to noise. And then if there are some other possible external forces that just appears here. So when the situation gets more complex uh, for complex fluids with uh, viscoelasticity or hydrodynamic memory, uh, this equation is not enough anymore. Uh, so there is, uh, there appears the so-called uh, friction kernel, memory kernel, uh, but it's still linear in velocity. And again, we have a noise which is related to the friction kernel through every T and the possible external forces. So this emergent memory kernel depends on the interaction of the colloid and the medium. And uh, we expect it to be independent of external forces acting on the colloid. So it's just a property of the particular uh, um, uh, colloid and whatever medium it is immersed in. Uh, so this provides a way to probe the medium properties. So the, if we measure the, the uh, position fluctuation of the colloid, and that, uh, that gives us information about the medium. So this is what microreology does typically, uh, infer uh, properties of the medium by measuring the particle fluctuation. There are some recent studies which actually showed that uh, this memory kernel seemed to depend on uh, external force on the particle in certain scenarios. For example, in, uh, in this experiment in, in colloid, on a colloid in micellar solution and also some uh, molecular dynamic studies of methane in water, it was shown that the, um, the emergent memory kernel seemed to depend on the trap that was used on the particle. So that's uh, a bit surprising because the medium particle interaction, if it starts to depend on, uh, on external parameter, uh, that's a little bit of a problem. So the question is how to understand it. And another question that I'm going to address is, uh, is somewhat related but different, which is suppose the medium that we are talking about, it's, a, it's, in, uh, I mean, it's in a near critical state. So there are large fluctuations, uh, length and time scales are diverging. And uh, the question that I'm going to ask is, if we look at the motion of the probe uh, particle, what are the signatures of criticality that one can see? Okay, can we infer something about the, at least, I mean, can we say that the medium is undergoing a phase transition by looking at the probe only? So I'm going to address this uh, in a very simple model, uh, which is a probe particle coupled to a Gaussian field. So this is the model. So the colloid is uh, modeled by an overdumped Brownian particle in D dimension. X is the position, the capital X is the position of the colloid. And the medium is modeled by a very simple conserved Gaussian field. Uh, and the coupling is taken to be a translationary invariant uh, potential. And uh, it's also linear in the field. And then there is an external potential. Because remember, we want to uh, also ask if one can see this uh, external force dependent uh, memory kernel. So for simplicity, we just take a harmonic uh, trap. So this is the Hamiltonian of the system. Uh, so we have the Gaussian field, then there's the uh, quadratic trap, and this is the uh, coupling potential. And the whole system is immersed in, an, uh, in a uh, thermal bath of ambient temperature T. Okay, so this is the, I mean, one can write, given the Hamiltonian, we can write the time evolution of the joint system. Uh, these are the coupled Langevin equations. Uh, I, I will not go into the details, but the point is that because of the coupling, now there's an extra force on the particle. The force comes from this coupling potential. And in absence of this coupling, what we have for the field is it's just a free field, Gaussian fluctuations. And there's a uh, length scale, which is controlled by this r. r is the distance from the criticality. And the length scale diverges as 1 by square root r as the r equal to 0 critical point is approached. On the other hand, for the free particle, we have a uh, non strain ullenbeck process. Again, the position fluctuations are Gaussian. And the two-point correlation of the position decays exponentially with time. Remember this because this is, uh, I mean, we're going to need this a bit later. So there's a time scale which is proportional to the, to the stiffness of the trap. Now in presence of the, uh, of the coupling, because of the linearity of the system in, 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 in the field, we can write an effective equation uh, of this form. So this is exact. So far uh, we have not used any approximation. 
So here you see we have an overdone Planzeva equation. So this is the resulting uh, friction term. This is the friction kernel, memory kernel, which is of this form. So it depends on the on the Fourier transform of the uh, interaction potential, but it does not depend on the trap on the particle. And then there is the noise. Of course, the whole system is in equilibrium, so noise and um, friction they satisfy FDT. But the question is that if we now try to linearize this uh, kernel, can we see uh, uh, external force dependent uh, dependence? And what is the effect of the uh, criticality on this whole business? So to see that, we uh, compute the position autocorrelation. So just xt, x at time 0 in the equilibrium state. We cannot do it exactly, uh, but we do it perturbatively. So uh, both the field and the position we uh, expand perturbatively around the, the uh, decoupled situation. So in a, in a series of uh, lambda. And it turns out that the, uh, the two-point correlation, the leading order correction from the coupling is, is of the order lambda square. So this C2t is the quantity that we want to calculate. And uh, we can actually calculate it exactly in, in some sense. I mean, we have an integral expression. So this is the correction. And it depends on this function fu, which in turn depends on the, on the trap strength here in omega naught and the interaction potential. Okay, so uh, yeah, so given any potential, we can numerically evaluate. And uh, it turns out that at long time, we can uh, do better than that. In, in the long time regime, we can show that irrespective of the specific form of the interaction, it actually shows power law decay. So this is the uh, scaling form of the correction to the two-point correlation. It has uh, the scaling function. And uh, we can even extract uh, the long time behavior more explicitly. So for times smaller than uh, 1 by r squared, which is the uh, parameter which controls the criticality, we have a t to the power minus d by 4 decay. And at um, uh, longer times than that, we have a different decay. So we have a power law decay. That's clearly an effect of the coupling to the uh, medium. Moreover, as we approach uh, nearer to the criticality, there is a crossover. So remember that for the free particle, the correlation was completely exponential. So as soon as there is a coupling turned on, we'll see this lower power law decay. So the exponential we will not be able to see. So here we have plotted the numerically evaluated uh, two-point uh, correction to the two-point correlation for different uh, dimensions with some um, specific uh, interaction potential. So for example, if you look at this plot at d equal to 3, at criticality, we have a t to the power minus 3 by 4 decay which crosses over to t to the power minus 5 by 2 as we go away from criticality. So there are clear signatures of, of uh, the underlying phase transition at the probe motion. Okay. So now uh, we come back to the other question. So what happens if we try to extract uh, the effective linear memory kernel? So we demand a, an effective equation of this form, an overdamped equation. This is the memory kernel. This is the external force. And then zeta and uh, gamma are, of course, yeah, 2 plus 2, yeah. So, uh, and now from, uh, from this memory kernel, uh, okay, so this memory kernel is actually related to the Laplace transform of the two-point correlation that we calculated. So again, we uh, expand this, uh, this effective memory kernel in terms of the uh, parameter lambda. And it turns out this lambda 2 is exactly this f function that we saw earlier. And of course, this f function, if you remember, it explicitly dependent, uh, depended on the, on the um, uh, trap strength. So here again are some plots of this uh, uh, linear memory kernel. And it depends on, on kappa. It also shows power law decays. Okay, so here if you see that uh, these this, this, uh, features appear, uh, which are kind of novel features. But I mean, uh, the, the, uh, the base statement is that it does depend on the trap strength. So this in some sense is actually um, not consistent with uh, writing the, the spirit of this effective equation because if the memory kernel uh, of interaction of a probe and medium starts to depend on the on the um, uh, on the uh, trap that we are putting only on the particle so then i mean we don't know where we are standing uh, so and the reason is that the actual memory kernel is completely nonlinear so we are just forcing it to be linear and then there is there is some effective uh, uh, dependence on other parameters coming. Uh, so yeah, so the whole analysis was perturbative to, uh, to see whether, I mean, it really holds or how, what is the validity of it. We also did some numerical simulations uh, where the field was uh, modeled by Rouse polymer chain on a, on a lattice and the probe was modeled by random walker on the same lattice. And we saw that this, uh, this is in 1D. So this um, e to the power minus 1 fourth decay, which is at criticality, that seems to emerge 
So this effect is uh, is non perturbative non perturbative. We have the power law decay also in and um, when, when the perturbation strength is not very small. So yeah. So I'll just finish. Uh, so I described a model of um, collateral particle coupled to a near critical uh, Gaussian field. And we looked at the effective motion of the probe. And we saw that uh, in reality, it's described by a nonlinear memory kernel. But um, if we try to extract an uh, effective linear kernel, it depends on the external uh, potentials. And moreover, uh, this uh, coupling leads to algebraic temporal decay of correlation. And there's, there are clear signatures of criticality at, uh, at in this power law exponent. So I'll end by advertising this upcoming conference. And uh, yeah, is there any questions? So we are now open for the questions. Coupling was linear in phi. V was nonlinear, but these results do not depend on the. So what happens is that if we, uh, I mean, we did not take any specific form of V. So here are the uh, equation of motion. Uh, no, if V was uh, linear in uh, x, you mean x minus x? No, then no, no, no. Then it's interesting. In V, that we get, yeah, we get a nonlinear effective uh, memory kernel. But that nonlinearity is in, in velocity of the of the probe. Uh, again, in the interaction. Uh, in, in the potential, uh, we just took a theta function. So the the probe has a range of interaction, and it sees only the sites which are directly under it. But we can take other forms also. Uh, a very nice talk. So I was just trying to understand the physics. So. Is it the, the dependence, the strong dependence on the potential because it's a confining potential? For example, if you had periodic potential and you change the period. And periodic potential and change the period, okay. Then you won't see much dependence, I guess, because it's deconfined anyway. So if you have a confined potential and change the confinement, then probably your effective distance between the particles and effective interaction strength, yes. that can contribute to the memory because it, that will. in the long run. So yes. do I understand that correctly? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this will, this will. So for example, I mean, if you go to uh, longer, so th these are the features that appear as the effect of uh, uh, effect of the trapping, and these small features would change. And I expect, yeah, what you said. I mean, if it's uh, very la long range, uh, sorry. I mean, if it's very weak, then the effect will also be uh, weaker. The uh, correlation function depends on the memory kernel, you have any understanding? Uh, you mean this thing? Uh, this is the relation. So, the, uh, so this is this is the effective memory kernel. So we demand an equation of this form. Uh, and then if you calculate, I mean, if you do a few steps of algebra, you can show that the two-point correlation, the, this is the Laplace transform of time Laplace transform of the two-point correlation. This is the uh, effective memory kernel. This is the relation. And we then just expanded it. Uh, I mean, using the expansion of C, we expanded and uh, computed the. Yeah. Sorry. Here. This is uh, the kernel. That, that capital VQ is uh, for the, the Fourier transform of the interaction potential. Interaction potential. Okay. But surprisingly, the long time behavior doesn't depend on the, as long as the potential is integrable, the sense v, v0 exists, the long time behavior and everything goes through. So we don't need the explicit form of the potential. So uh, for example, short range repulsion will work? Yes, I expect so. As long as V0 is, is finite, it should work. So let's thank the speaker.